Hello people and welcome back to Dutch Modeling. Today with another inbox review. The again review sample provided by Ravel, so I want to thank them for this one. This is their brand new Leopard 1A1 145. It's a uh, level 4 kit, so they one of their toughest. Uh, it appears to have 233 parts. I'm guessing it will be a German and a Norwegian version of them. On the side, the box art and the kit number 03258. More box art here, and more box art there, and more box art there, so that's not special. On the back, you got some pictures of the build model, some sprue shots, some general information, and some of the colors you need. These are all in Ravel colors. They're having their own paint line. Obvious. They come in the uh, much disliked side opening box. So let's see what's in there. And that's it. What's in the box? You got the what we well, always does general. I'll put this aside. Warning. Advising with then the <coughs> decals, put it aside with this. And, and this is the first that I saw for me is this. Ravel actually used several bags. And that's a new one for them, as far as I know. That's a plus. Uh, they got three different bags, different kinds. Uh, rubber band tracks and what it looks like to be rubber band towing cables, but we'll get to that later. To start with the instructions, and you can see here there's something, stick something to the instructions. This is, I think, an entire antenna wire. So this is a nice plus again. Instruction is a booklet. With the color call out on the back in color, which is always nice. So, let's see. Start with an overview of how you should work, explanation of all the you know, markings, the colors you need, and the Ravel colors. They're only Ravel colors, but they're in 15 different languages, which color you need. So you can always get them in a different manufacturer. Something else, what for me is new with Ravel, they lettered their sprues. So it's not more endless searching for the right sprue, just got a letter with it now. And a plus. Uh, I haven't seen this either. They actually say that if you need a spar spare part, there's no problem. You can contact them directly uh, to a email address or a normal mailing address. The one is this is in German. There's an email address in Germany. Uh, France, Germany, this is in Dutch, it's in Germany. This one is in English, and they actually got a mailing address in Great Britain. So. With a disclaimer, of course, for shipping costs, and etc. So, that's cool. Like I said, sprue map, very clearly, the numbering. Finally, they got lettering on their sprues. That's definitely a plus. So, let's start. And they start with constructing the entire lower hole. It's not the uh, top style, it's all loose parts. You can see sides, bottom, back. And the lights, and they actually tell you immediately to paint the lights. So the, this shows you that the detail, if you can see it on the color callouts, will be shown as well on the instruction sheet. After that, there go the pump stops. This is the idler adjustler, 
Jester, Swing Arms, Sharp Absorbers, the wheels, and we have, uh, two idlers, two, uh, 14 rod wheels, and two sprocket wheels. Suspension, more parts going on. It's bumped up on the other side, just switching from the sides. And the swing arms with the uh, shock absorbers go on. Next on the return rollers, both sides, and the idlers, the roll wheels. And then they tell you to do the very old and eh, I don't know if it's completely hazard free melting technique on the rubber band tracks. But you could probably also use the uh, glue, you can also use it in gluing your inner tube of your bicycle. The glue normally works as well. And then they put, tell you to put on the tracks, which won't happen until much further away. <coughs> Next up, the upper hole. Start with drilling out some holes. And they tell you which size drill bit you need. This is great. And this is an optional, only if you build in the German second BL, probably in the back. Yeah, this will be the second BL. So there's, and there's a third BL. And this is normal. So only if you build this one, you need to drill the holes on the front. And again, drilling with a one millimeter drill bit. That's cool. Mm, the upper and lower already come together. So I'm painting the parts and building a little. It looks like a toolbox here. Sides go on. Armor parting again. The drilling with the drill size next to it. That's a cool thing. Uh, side armor goes on. The engine grills or exhaust grills go on, and you have to check here if you go for the German one or for the Norwegian one because there's a difference. And they're telling you to, with the German one, you have to cut off a little bit here. Side skirts go on, uh, mud flaps on the back go on, turn around, do the same on the other side with some lifting hooks. Um, to the back, tools, barrel cleaning rod, and it could be for either uh, tools or gasoline and water. Uh, more tools on the other side, no, no, it's the same side, sorry. More tools, this is the other side, uh, tools again. And you go to the back, all kinds of hooks and the shorts. Spread track link, storage bag, case, the uh, at Kreutz. <coughs> I cannot remember now what's it called. No, I know what it's called, I just can't remember. Sorry. <coughs> and then there is the I think this is a phone box. Yeah, it's a phone so the infantry can talk to the uh, commander. And there are two different versions. For the second BL it's round, for the third BL and the Norwegian one it's rectangular. This is the uh, towing cable. And it goes on the side here as you can see. And this is actually... I don't know. In front, that rack, still don't have a clue what it is for. All the leopards have it, but I don't know what level one have it. I have not, don't know what it is. It isn't a spread, it, it aren't spare track links, I think. Uh, only on the second BL, that's why you need to drill on the holes on the front. The tone hooks, the driver's hatch and the driver's view ports. Brackets for the sides on the fenders. Headlights, and then the work on the turret starts with the gun mount, basically it. Vision blocks, 
upper and lower turret parts, gun ports, and you need to drill that part out. Probably antenna. We'll see in a second. <coughs> All kinds of small stuff on the turret here. Doesn't white out too much on the camera. All range finders and the shorts, hooks, parts of the cupola, yeah, the gun, it's two parts with the mantlet, the machine gun, two parts, three parts, uh, start on the third basket here, and more parts here, and it's probably finished and completely assembled. The uh, smoke rack launchers, the commander's cupola and the gunner's cupola, a lotus. Uh, I'm guessing the gunner. The canvas cover, the hatches go on, as you can see. Slide sideways. You can open or close them, that's up to you, but they're not being any. Uh, Interior, so you're probably going to close them, uh, or you're going to put some figures in there. Then there's the uh, antenna mount. Again, the wire on the front is for the antenna. And they tell you to heat it and just push it in. And the other side, another antenna. Same story. Heat it, push it in. The spotlight, search light, infrared light. It's a light. I don't know what kind of light. Gonna here and it's gonna do next to the gun, open or closed, that's up to you. If you want it open, you have to cut that part in half. Turret and hole come together. Normally that's then it's done, but nope. There's the travel lock in placed. And it's in two parts, so you can choose to actually lock down the gun in the backwards position and then the final step is mounting of the rear view mirrors and either in a driving position or folded down in a combat position then we are at the uh, color collar so this is the uh, second Paulos Bundeswehr it's the build this is the uh, 2B Panzer Bataillon 240 Braunschweig Heme So this is 76, this is 75 And then we got the Norwegian And I'm guessing by the camo schemes I'm gonna try this one, the Sprinter Camo This is the uh, Royal Norwegian Army of 88 And all the deco callouts that come with that so, and just a want to check. Uh, as you can see here, it actually says A86 and B85 and B83, E72. So they're actually using the uh, ladder collage for the spruce, which is a very good thing. Talking about spruce. Just tape chat. That's also a good thing. Let's see what we got. There are multiple sprues in a bag if they want to come out. Let's start with this, the bigger one. This is sprue M. You can see down here. I actually did it. Yay. It's a two-part gun, and it doesn't use locator pins. It actually has complete lengths of uh, locator here sp shafts. I don't know how you want to call this. Better get a close-up. You can see it's the. The total length of this bigger part, you can see it's uh, that I, there. Oh, that definitely won't shift around when you're gluing it. So that's a good thing. That's cool. 
never seen that before. <coughs> uh, the side skirts, there are a lot of uh, ejected pin marks on the inside, so. but then again they're down with a very nice texture on here, which isn't too, too deep, but I'm guessing a wash will get there in very nicely. The detail on the gun though is pretty good. This looks very nice. There is a casting texture on the uh, matlet, which is very nice. I haven't seen that from Revell before. These are the mud flaps on the back, and this is that thingy on the front. And I still uh, I don't know what this is. I have no clue. But uh, there are a lot of ejected pin marks just in the middle of the crosses. So I'll go with you the close up now, and I'll show you that in a second. Just to the darker side, the texture there on the side skirts. You can see the lighting isn't optimal now. The light, and then there's let me see, turn around, cast texture, mantlet. That looks very nice. Ask me. And then there's this thing. Turn around again. You can see in the middle of the axis there are ejected pin marks and all of them. So that's a bit of a shame. And you have to send them off, I guess. And the detail on the gun is pretty nice with the thermal sleeve and everything. And the casting of this already in a bend. It's also nice. Nice touch. These are all kinds of things. This is the viewer. There's, there's some flash on here. Also here, cast texture. These are on the sides of the turret. A little bit of cast texture. These are like venting covers with texture as well. This is the night viewer. I don't know what that is to actually. Should be the lens of that thing. Yeah, looks good. You can get those vent covers. Actually, casting texture on them. The viewing light. Yeah, you can see there in the bottom there's a little bit of flash. And then these sides, and this is a part of the view uh, range finders. I'm not completely sure about camera wants to pick it up that also with cast texture so this is pretty good detail and here we have brackets actually nothing special yeah. well still this is also part of the kit so uh, more than this isn't nothing special get it back in the back Now it will never happen before again. The next bag, and again, close with just with tape. And there are multiple sprues. Got the sprues with the road wheels. Some nice texturing on the side uh, yeah these are all the road wheels and I'm guessing these are the idlers uh, just that different but these will be the idlers these two and the rest will be road wheels rubber texture on the side so that's cool and on the inside as well there's nothing on the actually the surface which touches the road, but inside and on the inside. That's it's quite some detail for a hole. And again, they let it to sprue. There's a big plus. You can see there on the side the detailing. 
the road wheel and the idlers. Once you've seen one, you always have seen them all. They're all the same. And on the inside, as you can turn around, as, as well, the detail. That's cool. It's not a first for them, I think. Sides of the hole, the sprocket wheels with a with very nice detailing and all sorts of small stuff. You can see that cross on the back, light kreutz, I think it's called light kreutz, but I'm not 100 percent sure. The travel log, eyes, towing hooks, light the headlights. These are I don't know actually. Looks like oh these are parts of the uh, the, the, the uh, these they come in between. But I think I saw in my eye spy uh, where was I looking at a minute a moment ago? A couple of sinkholes. Short shots. I think I wasn't sure completely. It was part of the plastic, but just the. Yeah, here on the back. These. They missed some. Yeah, so. <laughs> There you can see those aren't supposed to be there, but uh, you have to check if you can see them, because on here on the bottom is the locating pin, so you probably need to fill those. There's some indentations on this one as well. And this is, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like that. Looks damaged on the side, but completely there. I'm not completely sure if this here is supposed to be like this. But the major parts look very nice. Especially the, uh, you can see as well as a part of the sprue broke off here. Cut it wrong, it looks like. The sprocket wheel itself looks very nice. Detail on both sides. You can see that's an eye catcher. And then there's all kinds of small stuff. Return rotor, uh, yeah, return rotors. Blocks, hooks, eyes, headlights there. And all sorts of small stuff. And then turn this around so you can see the uh, these on the inside. And again, the detail there. So that looks good. And the part I've been waiting for the most, the turret. I had a little sneak peek before. This cast turns. Very nice. Turret basket does require some cleanup. Pretty thin. And mounts for the smoke grenades, launchers. The canvas cover, nice detailing. The commanders and gunners, or loader and gunners. Hatches, the antenna mounts, smoke grenade launchers, the spares, the turret machine gun, which has on one side the cooling holes and on the other side it doesn't. Uh, I think that should be on both sides to be honest. 
but I'm not 100% sure. I'll let you be the judge of that. So, yeah, but the, the cast texture on the turret, that's uh, high quality. I hope the camera picks it up. There it is. This looks good. This looks very good. This is just the turret bottom there. It's not a texture, actually. No, there's no texture there. Turn around. These are the parts for the turret basket. You see. And there's small great launchers there. Some, this is the machine I was talking about. So, see, we, try, we, we got this side. And let me turn it around. And then you can see, especially here in the front, there, the cooling holes. How it looks now. Let me go see if I can turn it around like this. No, no, I can't, sorry. Now, so there's there's a, there a very big difference between the two sides, and I don't think that's supposed to be that way. And the this one, of course, in the canvas cover, which looks very good. Again, put this back in there. The bunch. First, it's two. This is the uh, last bag with screws. I count two so far, it means we're nearly done. Upper hole, lower hole, sides, two back plates, two back plates, and there is a difference. There are two differences. I don't think I saw two back plates on the instructions, to be honest. Let me check. Ah, no. Uh, the one, this one you don't need. So there probably will be coming a different variant as well. Also you don't need these. I didn't even notice this before. These are blacked out. This is blacked out. This is blacked out. You don't need those parts. So there are only one, two, three parts you don't need. That's cool. I didn't see that before. So the lower hole, and now of course, the doing this like this, there's a lot riding on how this and these fit together. Well, let's stay with this first. The lower hole. There's the hatches, escape hatch, but there's no rifting detail or bolting detail in here, so that's a shame. Sides, the back plate, the two different uh, engine covers for the German and the Norwegian ones, uh, bump stops, tools, swing arms with uh, shock absorbers, the works. And the rear lights being molded on, and they look pretty sharp, to be honest. The tools. Don't look too bad. A bit of soft detail here and there. The swing arms don't seem to have any misfire, so to say. Looks decent. 
Let's see. It's the idler adjuster. The bump stops. Mm. Swing arms with shock absorbers. Tools. The air intakes or exhaust. I, uh, have, I don't know for sure. I'm not a specialist when it comes to the leopard. One of the two back plates. Don't turn around. This is the oh, as you can see, where is it? I hope it focuses. There it is. There's the escape hatch, but there's no detailing on it whatsoever. So the lower part of the hole seems to be completely straight, so there's no warping. That's a good thing. And then the final screw, the upper hole, and the slip texture here, good. Grills molded on, yeah, that's a bit of a shame. This is the uh, bulkhead, it comes in the middle just to make sure it's stiff enough. The sides, all the molded on detail already, some more tools, and the spare track links. Uh, Revell Leopard 1 from 2015, so it's a pretty new kit. The Revell 1 they brought out is uh, well, two years old now, so, and they are, this one has some extras to make it. So that means that, unknown to me, this is 2015 kit. They actually are doing the lettering since 2015. Learn something new. Detailing on the sides look good. Seem too much deformation. Uh, all seems solid. There's a little bit of cleanup on the tools. There's some. And uh, this will be the underside. So you won't see that there are some eject pin marks, but you won't be able to see them because you glue them to the hole. Yeah, some nice detail again. Very nice. Nice texture, texturing and everything. I'm gonna take this a little bit off. I got lights here. There are lights about so far under the camera, so that's quite light. You can just hope you can see the texturing like this here. And the Engine grills there and the exhaust. And here's one of the sides. I can imagine the other side looks exactly the same. And here there are some tools. Also look pretty good. And this is the uh, middle of the kit. Now, oh, see that I can put this back in the back again. And then we have the tracks and the decals left. Let's start with the tracks. And oh yeah, the uh, tow cables, which is from that movable plastic. I think this is actually a very I want to see how the paint catches on to this. But it looks like a good idea, to be honest. Easy to clean than uh, normal styrene because it, it's bendy, it won't break. And the detailing is not too bad. Uh, it's black, so I don't know if the camera picks it up. Oh, it does pick it up perfectly. And that detailing is cool. Oh, close it. There it is. That's nice. And then there are the tracks, which are the rubber band tracks with some, of course, some eject panels. There are spacing between the uh, pins in the middle. Guide horns. You can see, you can see through it. Uh, that's probably the way it's supposed to be. And then there's this. Well, it's a bit of a shame. They want you to melt this together. The detail 
They look pretty nice. Can see. And on the inside. And in front. So yeah, this looks very good. Back in here. And all that's left are the decals. And if I'm not mistaken, it doesn't say here, it's Ravel Subsidiary of Hobbyco printed in Italy. And that gives me a whole other idea that these are being printed by uh, Cartograph. They look brilliant, nice and flat, nothing wrong. Let's see if I can catch the light so you can see where the carrier film starts or ends. Or not. But yeah, nothing wrong with these. So Back again. Put this here in the booklet. Safe. Back in here. So this is the review, end of the review of the Revell, the new Revell Leopard A1A1, 135 scale, Revell level 4, and kit number 03258. Uh, it looks like a very good kit. The details uh, are beyond what I expected from Revell, to be honest. Some of the details. Uh, I'm anxious about the fit of the lower hole with the sides and if everything went as planned you will be able to see down there how I build it so I uh, yeah I'm looking forward to building it I will start this very very soon and I hope after this I will tell you how it went together so stay tuned bye bye hello people uh, well as you can see, it's done, it's built, and um, it's actually a good kit, I have to say. And uh, like you just saw in the review, the parts separately looked pretty good. I couldn't really find a lot of mistakes. Uh, there are a couple I can show you in a second here on the model, uh, but again, they're not a lot. And I actually say this is a very good build. Texture, most of the fits, and I had a little bit of a fit issue and I'll show you that one. But that might as well copy my own mistake. So I'm um, this is the disclaimer. Because it's a uh, four part lower hole. And if you do not line that up precisely, you will get a little bit of a fit issues. So that might just be what I did, just didn't line it up right and got a little bit of a fit issue, but it's only a little bit of a fit issue. Uh, working with the new sprue, map, sprue mapping they do, it's brilliant. It works like all the other major brands and smaller brands, clearly, finally. Uh, cleaning up, no problem. Not a lot, don't think I saw a lot of flash. Uh, the only, here's this side. It's a little bit of what I need to be filling. Well, these are the these are still need to be glued in place, so I haven't done yet. But you still need to fill it. But I show you that in a second as well. And I didn't do. I haven't done the antenna. It's still here, and I haven't done the side armor, which looks to be fitting just fine if you dry fit it like this. So that's not a problem really. And the reason that I didn't do this is I like to paint my models with the wheels off and the 
tracks off and with these attached I do not know how easily I can do the uh, track placement because you cannot see the upper side of the tracks I don't know if I can get it through either. so um, these are not mounted yet I still have to glue the tow cables they are glued on the lower side here and I think that's it even yeah the antenna sorry I'm getting a cold so I'm shining a little bit breathing through my nose uh, my stuffed nose so uh, I'm gonna take the turret off there's still a couple of wheels missing they're in here because I didn't glue them the only really the only real downside on the kit for me are the tracks because these are the they look good but they're rubber bands first and they this is white tag I used to just put them together and it sticks for a while you can see they look good the detail is good uh, well clean enough but so stuff that like those pin marks they will go away with weathering but it's the way they are connected with this very old style very very old style uh, heat uh, screwdriver and melt the tracks and that's not really something I want to do to be honest there are some multiple ways to do it differently and I really think that this is it's not a letdown definitely not because uh, I got too much white stuff in here see I mean it's it's not a game breaker no but I mean the melting these come on guys we're in 2017 almost 2018 uh, there's different ways and the same goes for the antenna you got the antenna brackets here on top you got the metal rod for the antenna on the, the uh, instructions and they want you to cut it to length no problem and then heat up one end and then just push it in yeah that's not gonna happen because this is so thin that it will break so one second please and back so yeah the tracks are so far the only let down I can find they're just not that what they can be yeah. I got it now with white tag, so it's stuck tag together, but even the white tag eats at the plastic. So if they could make it for like something like the S or just link a length or single links, that will, in my eyes that would be better. Well, opinions might differ. Uh, detail wise. Yeah, it just all goes together very good, like, very nicely. Getting this together is a little bit of a bitch, but I can do it still, that's no problem. Everything fits. Uh, I glued that down. The hatches are still movable, as you can see, which kind of is not very nice there not being any interior. Uh, this is some rubbery stuff which makes the uh, little extra to in the infrared light you got the range finders on the side with the these is made to close them and the instruction says they have to be closed up well I thought I'd just keep them open like this so you can see inside actually and paint the inside because that's also one thing that's mentioned in the instructions when you glue them on you have to paint them and then you have to close them up so yeah why paint them sorry but I don't see why I should do that the barrel is a two page barrel uh, I do a little bit more work here on the seam top and bottom which is kind of it's not the easiest thing because it's got quite some detail on it, but that's also just 
just do it, it will work. Would be nice if they could make a uh, slide molded barrel so you don't have to fool around with the sanding of the uh, mold the seam because like I said there is quite some detail on the barrel and it gets kind of hard getting that back because it's all raised detail. Rest, no problems whatsoever on the turret. They all fit well. And it just came together qu pretty quickly. Uh, the hole, I'm going to take this one off as well. There's no need to put let it on. I got see the wheels are so close. I got them in the hole. So. <coughs> These are the, 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 yeah, the cables, and then you can see the, so far for me, only real problem, problem is a big word, but uh, default on the, uh, defect on the kit, is there, sig marks. Uh, on the other side, also there. That is a locator hole for the tow cables, so don't look at those, but here on top of here, these are sinkholes. So you have to fill this, which, I got to be honest, it's the only thing on the entire kit that doesn't really fit well. And I'll take this out because it makes a lot of noise. So I'm gonna glue those down, still gonna wait till painting. Uh, wheels go together easily, no problem with that. No problems here. Uh, it's all pretty good. The only thing that I said is, if you do not put the sides, the bottom and the back together, pretty much perfect, you're gonna end up with a little bit of uh, fit issues, which I had because it wasn't perfect. Um, I think I broke something. Oh no, I didn't break something. Uh, the best thing you can see is you really have to be careful. You can see the lines inside here with the fender there, and these. This lines up. This side lines up better here. This side lines better than this, and it's all entire length of the entire vehicle. And this side, no, this side lines better. I'm gonna break this off. This side lines up better than this side. You can see here. There's a little bit of a gap, and there. And on the other side, there isn't. Uh, here, on the entire length, it just does not fit quite well. I had to use a ton of glue. And on the other side, it's nice and straight. And I got it over the entire length. One side just does not fit quite as well as the other side. Here again, you can see here, it's just a bit of a gap. I filled it up quite well, I still have to fill it up a little bit. On the other side, you got the same thing. There's no, no, almost no gap. This is just my fault, I snapped it off. And I think, it's just that one side to the, oh, to the other side, it's just, an, just that little bit of a difference in fixing it. You can see here as well. Uh, you can see there, that is flat, that fits perfectly. And here, it just does that little bit of overlap. So this tells me that either this side or this side, it can just move a little bit further down. This, just, just what would it be? One, two mil, just that little bit further that way and it would all be fitting perfectly. So that's one thing you really have to measure twice, glue once. And the instructions, they are, there's no, not, not, not faulting them anywhere. They're clear. Two point 
I forgot to drill this hole, that's my mistake, but I don't even know what I need it for. Probably for the tow cable, but... I just, I... Yeah, like I said, I have to put on these myself, but that's my choice. And um, all the other things. I'm just looking. Oh, you can actually get the option to open them or close them. So it was not just my opinion. They also did it. I didn't see this before. Uh, yeah, I think it's even it. Yeah, personally, this will be the camo scheme. I will paint, be painting on it eventually. So. Yeah. <coughs> the conclusion of the brand new Ravel 1 to 35 Leopard 1A1 in the German or Norwegian scheme. Uh, it's a very good kit. It's a fast build. I only needed roughly 10 hours, I guess. Five to ten hours to get to this point, so don't it doesn't take in a century. Uh, it's a great uh, if you really start in the morning and you're undisturbed, you can have it finished, built in the evening. If you're a little bit of a competent build, uh, that's the only thing. But that's the same with Tamiya. Tamiya, you would probably build twice as fast, and they're four times the price. So, uh, in the scale, Scala of the Leopards of 1A1, uh, no, it have, uh, doesn't have the uh, details and finesse of a Meng 1 or Tecum or Tamiya, but it doesn't have the price of a Meng and Tecum or Tamiya. Uh, for, what it, it's a, for what it is, it's a very good kit. Texture-wise, detail-wise, uh, build-wise, because it's an easy build, like I said, the only downfall, in my opinion, are the tracks. But I know people out there that love those rubber bands. And that's no, not a problem, especially with Modern Armor, because they got uh, active tracks. But I would just say, make them of a different material, so you don't have to do the melt technique. Just try and get, like, like uh, the Tamiya. Uh, rubber bands you can glue with uh, inner tube glue or the dragon styrene that you can glue with a Tamiya extra fin something like that that would be ideal but otherwise that I have nothing bad to say about this it's a good kit if you want a easy to build leopard 1 and one and you don't want the Tamiya one definitely get this it's all I can say so to finish it all, I hope you enjoyed this re build review, uh, if you did, please let me know, thumbs up, and if you haven't already, sub, and hope to see you next time, bye bye.